Hey guys, Krista here with Make Everyday Colorful, and I wanted to do another book review for you guys tonight. This is actually a series, and I don't have every book in the series, but I have, uh, let's see, six of them, and I think there's probably about six more that I would like to get, but I wanted to show you this series of books. I'm currently reading them to my, I'd say, pre-K pre and kindergartner. Um, they actually like the books. There's a bunch of pictures in them, so I'm just going to show it to you. It's called the if you series so like if you lived with the sioux indians so inside each book there's a bunch of pictures and it's really awesome how they do these books so and with every book in this series they'll ask questions how did the sioux worship so then they'll go into you know how how they did that and what was the most important time in a boy's life so they go into all these details by asking a question and then they go into details about you know the sioux indians their life or how they lived what they did how did girls have a special ceremony too so all these questions are answered in here and what happened if someone got sick so they talk about so many different little topics in this little book and like i said there's pictures all throughout and i like how it gives like a lot of information and in just a little book like this and it's easy for my kids to understand because with each question it's not like pages of information what what would you would you live in the same place all the time look how you see it and it's kind of a short description so no you would live in different places the Sioux Indians had to keep on the move to hunt for buffalo that roamed the plains. When the Sioux Indians traveled, they took everything they had with them. You didn't travel much in winter months. It was freezing cold. And they even have, um, I think, a couple other different um, books like this with different Indians. So you can see how different Indians, because, you know, of course, we all know, depending on where they lived in North America, you know, they lived differently. Some built huts or homes and some had teepees where they moved a lot so i really like how it explains how that tribe of indians lived so another one i'm going to show you says if you lived at the time of the american revolution same thing bunch of pictures uh the questions they ask like what happened <clears throat> to a loyalist family after the declaration and so it goes into the description some of the other questions did any women or children fight in the continental army how did people get food and clothes so i'll just try and read something really quick from it nothing was wasted animal bones were saved and made into buttons goose feathers were used to stuff pillows reeds and twigs were woven into blankets old pieces of cloth and outgrown clothing were cut into squares and sewn into quilts so it's just telling you a little bit about how it was during the American Revolution. So the next one in this series I'm going to show you, if you lived at the time of the great San Francisco earthquake. Same thing as all the rest, a bunch of questions, like how big was the earthquake? Were there any warnings that the earthquake, earthquake was coming? Where would you live if your house was destroyed? It says the first days after the earthquake, more than half of the people in San Francisco had to sleep outdoors. The quake and fires had ruined their homes. Many went to parks around the city, spread their blankets, and slept outdoors on the ground. Refugees are people who lived, who leave their home because it's not safe to stay anymore, and they find new places to live. So that's just paraphrasing it. So all kinds of little um, questions answered about that earthquake if you sailed on the mayflower in 1620 what was the first thing the pilgrims did when they got on shore the women washed clothes there were so many dirty clothes to be washed it took the women all day to get the clothes clean the children ran after weeks and weeks of being cooped up like chickens and crowded in like sardines it was wonderful to run and run on the beach and some of the men began to repair the shallop which had been banged by about in the storm so one of them what did the pilgrims find on cape cod how did the pilgrims plan to build their town so you can see it's a bunch of information packed in these little books 
This one's if you lived in colonial times. And you can see I, I buy a lot of used books. These were most of these were actually from a library sale. So if you ever have your library's ever discarding books, that's a great place to get good books for not a lot of money. So we're I'm actually in the middle of reading this one right now. I have my bookmark in it. This is the one we're in the middle of right now with our homeschool. So <clears throat> we've been reading things like what did colonial people look like? And it talks about how the baby's dress and the adult's dress. Like for instance, uh, when they say a uh, baby fell on its pudding, I always just a thought that meant they fell like on their bum. No, they used to have this pillow like thing around babies. And if they fell down, they wouldn't get hurt because they had this on. And when children turned five years old, they started dressing them like adults. They no longer dress like babies. So a lot of more information in here too. What did colonial houses look like? And how did two men travel when they only had one horse? Bunch of questions answered. And a kid-friendly way with pictures. Like I said, my kids really enjoy it. I usually read it to them, you know, when we're sitting down having breakfast or something, I'm showing them the pictures and reading it to them. If you live at the time of the Civil War. Who fought in the Northern Army? Who fought in the Southern Army? Was it hard to get food in the North? And this one, it goes for, it talks about the South and the North for each one. So was it hard to get food in the North? And it would say, was it hard to get food in the South? So it goes back and forth. So you're learning bo about both sides. How did you entertain yourself in the North? So it'd be, how did you entertain yourself in the South? So this is one of the um, first books I read for their curriculum this year. And I really enjoyed it. I enjoy learning about all this. There's a lot of things I didn't know um, so yeah, I just, this is the series that I would recommend. Um, I would say you could probably start reading this. I would say kindergarten age, maybe, per, maybe pre-K, but kindergarten age and even up, you know, through middle school. I mean, I'm a, I'm an adult and I'm enjoying it. So, you know, it's a lot of little, uh, a lot of information in here. I didn't know. It's a quick read. I really like it. So if y'all enjoy this book review, check out some of my other book reviews and I'm going to try and put a link down below to uh the site i think it's good reason they'll have other books in this series that you can look at because there's several i can't name them all um and if y'all like this video click to subscribe and check out other book recommendations i have and y'all have a blessed day